12.45, it's well past 12.45 when we said we were starting. So we are starting. Audit and Risk Management Committee. <laughs> Excellent move, Jamie. Seconded, Tim. Thank you. Uh, part A. Any questions? If not, I'll put the report as a whole. Sorry, you're right? Oh, sorry. Page 179, it starts on. Four. Yeah. I'll put that. Those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, carried. And uh, strategy and finance. Uh, page 253. Um, moved. Jamie, seconded. David. Part A. And the report back on the CEO uh, report. And then part B and C, Yanni. Yeah, I just, just, just had a question. Um, there's a number of things in this, in the report back, they're on the LTP. But I just wanted to check, um, one, that, one submission that came to mind was around the central city rubbish collection. And it seemed a pretty straightforward um, thing. And I was just wondering if we'd had any progress on that or whether there's anything we need to do. Um, it's not quite so straightforward for lots of reasons, but um, we agreed that there'd be a report back to council in February. So what, so the work's underway, yeah. So why does it, like... There are a range of things. So, for instance, it's um, uh, changes to contracts. It, there are issues about access. Um, so uh, some of it's not just about putting everything on the road. Um, and uh, there are uh, the community to talk to. There's a, there's a, not, a, not everybody in the community wants the curbside bins. OK, so we're getting a report back in February. Yeah. Yep. Is, okay. it, is it any way to get that sooner than February? I'm just Sorry? Bit, is there any way to get it sooner than February? Because that's like a oh, year. There's quite a lot of work to do, Yanni, and there's a whole lot of other work that you're also asking us to do. Okay, so it's coming, uh, coming that, back in February? Is that the CBD, or was it just those CBD. people? CBD. It was the people who made the submissions yeah. at the LTP on the... Just that area, um, is it? Okay. Well, no, it's broader than that. Okay. Okay, so it's coming back in February. Thank you. So with that, I'll put the report as a whole. Or should I? Um, I'm on item six, actually. But, oh, sorry, we've got a seconder and a mover. Let me do this properly. Part uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, which is what we're currently on. Yeah. And seven, and part B. Put that. Those in favour, please say aye. aye. Those aye. opposed, carried. Thank you. And I've missed one. Page 195 the block offer and um, Phil, I think what might be sensible is do you want to delegate this to infrastructure to add the appendix? Just to, yes, ju and just to, to find if there's any fine tuning and uh, coming from today's discussion and also right. I'm aware we've had a, um, an opinion from, I a legal opinion from Ian or information as well. So yes. that could, I guess if, the, if this, um, if we could uh, delegate the f signing off decision to the Infrastructure Transport and Environment Committee, that, that process would work best. Okay, so moved, filled, uh, seconded. What are we doing? We're delegating it to the, the final sign off. At the Infrastructure Committee, there was a number of people who made submissions and they've sent through the things that they want incorporated, practically all of which are incorporated in the council submission, but there's no capacity for the public to make submissions on this so that we agreed to do it at the Infrastructure Committee by way of an appendix, which is what we did in Block Offer 2014 as well. Um, the legal opinion, which um, just for um, anybody's benefit, probably costs, I don't know, $7, $12.50? What's 20 minutes for your time? <laughs> Priceless. Priceless. Priceless, that's it, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> It's not thousands of dollars, is what I, it was an internal legal um, uh, one pager. <laughs> okay, I asked for that one. <laughs> um, one of the interesting suggestions, um, one of the interesting comments made by Ian um, in the verbal on that was uh, just the lack of the four well-beings in the Local Government Act, so that we can't actually act to protect the economic and environmental well-being. Right. 
Okay, but not a lot of jurisdiction over the deep sea oil area. Okay, right, I've got... I'll second Okay, I've got... So, um, have we got people here for questions? Or, okay. So, initially questions. You've got a question, Glenn, and then I'll yes. take speakers. Yep. Um, just over our relationship with MKT. So, I do notice uh, impact on Māori there. Two points there. It says um, people can make their own submissions, but we do have that living relationship. So, how, how might that work here? I mean, so is that something we the can The only do? people who can make submissions to the government on this are iwi, hapu, and local authorities. Okay. Yeah. But we do have a relationship mm. with them. So, is mm. there a sense in which we. Okay, the report says no impact, but actually... <laughs> oh, they can make, they are allowed to make their own submissions so on this. Iwi and Hapu. Right? something we do in partnership. Uh, partnership. Yeah. Helen, do you want to come and answer any questions? Uh, even though it's... Uh, 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 is it appropriate that we ask them of you? I've got Diane coming in as right. well. Okay, right. Okay, are there any other questions? Just Welcome, Diane. Diane. Okay. Yep, Yanni? Oh, just... Um, just wanted to just check in terms of the resolutions today. I'd like to make some additional resolutions. So, would you like me to do that now, or do you want just the? Do you want to tell us what they are? Yeah, yeah. Um, there's several. Um, the first one is um, in the submission, actually, just adding a 1.3 under 1.2 that says, given the concerns, uh, the above concerns, the council is opposed is opposed to the proposed block offer 2016. Um, so quite straightforward. Right. Um, the second one is just in regards to the resolutions, is to um, uh, that the council uh, request ECAN to make a submission and send a copy of our submission noting our concerns, that we also um, circulate and write to local MPs, uh, relevant ministers, and, and um, just to... Uh, basically make our views known. I think with MMP... OK, when we come to that... We need to start thinking so about So you're that. just foreshadowing those by way of addi uh, addition? Yeah. OK, that's cool. cool. Yep. OK, you've got one too, Pauline. Do you want to tell us what it is? Well, it's just relating to Ian's um, um, memo here, and it's about um, the potentially adverse economic impacts and that NZPM states that offshore operators have unlimited liability <coughs> for costs... But um, he says it might be an idea to provide details of these commitments. So if mm. we could ask them to do that, I think that would be a good thing to include in our submission. And that came up in the submissions from the public mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. How much are they actually liable for? Because their suggestion was that it was extremely yes. low. Oh yeah. no, the bond, that's the bond, okay. but also more details. And also I would like to include the, um, the fact that was pointed out in a, um, an email from Charles Grace that our waters are particularly rough, and it has a different type of, probably a different risk than drilling um, in other kind of seas like around Mexico. It adds another risk. So you just like those things yep. included in the submission, mm -hmm. okay? And if we delegate to the infrastructure committee to finalise it, that would take count to that. Phil, um, my question was along the same lines. It's probably to Ian, just to, um, to sort of clarify for us, because um, just that point Pauline uh, drew our attention to around the unliability, unlimited liability for costs and the event of um, of an oil spill, whereas the um, the information we received from the submitters was that the, around the penalty, that there was a maximum penalty kind of, of like a, limited to 10 million. I just wonder if you might be able to explain that but further in? Well, well, actually, I can't because I don't know enough about um, about that. All I'm passing on to you is that the information that um, NZPM has or provides is that there is unlimited liability. Um, so that what, what is that? One would say, well, whatever the cost. So we could seek clarification ar yep. around that's, that in SMS. That's, that's yep. what I'm suggesting. Thank that, you very that, much. That we seek clarification about the extent of that and also get confirmation that the council is regarded as one of the third parties that would be entitled to um, damages. Mm -hmm. I, we just need to know for sure that that is the case. Yeah. But on that, do you not request that they, they place a, a more substantial bond than 10 million? That's pathetic. 
Well, no, I, I don't know whether that 10 million is, is accurate or not. It talks about unlimited liability, which you know, could be billions of dollars. Um, <coughs> so yes. we, we should get this from NZPM. Yes, um, I think so. NZPM, I think they're called. Okay. Yeah, so are we on to debate now? Oh, no, I was just want to question. Yep. With regards to, um, Glenn kind of mentioned the partnership between um, EWI and ourselves, and the other <laughs> partnership we have is with ECAN. So we have the right, we have the responsibility to the high tide mark, ECAN have the rest. Um, I understand that they're not putting in a submission to this. Could we ask them why? Because, I mean, the fact of the matter is we have concerns, but it is only to the high tide, which is ridiculous when we're talking about deep sea drilling. So I'd just, I'd like to know why our partners aren't, or if they're not concerned. Um, that they, I wasn't aware that they weren't making a well, submission. I, Jana just mentioned it before, so I'm presuming... Oh, I actually asked them, um, ah. and they're not. Mm. So if we could, sorry, if we, yeah, because I mean, if we've got concerns, which I think are very valid, why our partners don't? Yeah, yeah there's somebody that I can talk to over there yeah. who yeah. I know was involved yeah. in the submission, I believe it was last year, so they did do a submission. They did do a submission last yeah. year. So, so they're not doing a second this, I understand. Well, apparently not. Well, could we ask, is, is that appropriate? I mean, it's Absolutely. You can you. ask what you like. Yep. Okay, so if there's no further questions, is that we've got a mover, have we? We've got Councillor Clearwater and Councillor Skander seconding. Um, any debate? Ah, oh, sorry. Yeah. Do you want to put those? Right. Okay. So the first one is uh, the Council, uh, the ITE be delegated to approve the final submission, which will include the appendix. Um, and then Yanni's got second one that the council requests ECAN to make a submission. Um, that, that we request, that we formally request ECAN uh, to make a submission and circulate a copy of ours to them. Yep. And the third one? That the council add an additional 1.3 to our submission that states, given the above concerns, we are opposed to the 2016 block level. Uh, I think that's. That's fine, you can just do that, can't you? You'll just do it? Okay. We just make it clear. Because, it, it, yeah. If you can, okay, and yep. then, the, the, then the third one then is um, that the council right to MPs, ministers, uh, with a copy of our submission expressing our concerns. And I just, the reason for doing that is with MMP, we, we, I think one of the things we do is we, we write to the government ministers all the time but actually what we need to understand through Parliament is there's different political parties that make up the government, the Māori Party Act, New Zealand First, and I think it would be really useful for us to actually start to express our views to those other parties who are part of the decision-making at central government, we, and, and just so that they're aware of what our concerns are. Also, local MPs. I hope, um, I have requested previously that we can have a meeting with the various local MPs and, and the various political parties at some stage in the near future, because it is important when we think about the future of ECAN, the future of some of these submissions and regeneration, that we actually do start engaging with them over trying to get the outcomes that we want for the city. Okay, so. thanks, Yanni. So just to get this right, the first one should should read up the top that the council formally requests ECAN to make a submission on this issue. Um, the the second one we don't need because we can just add that in. It's fairly it's implicit, you just want it made explicit. And then the Council wrote to Members of Parliament and Ministers with a, co a copy of the Council's submission expressing concern about this issue. That's can can I just suggesting. check, do you mean all MPs and all Ministers? I think yeah. probably local ones. Do you? Or? It should go to all, because if you, if you think about how Parliament works, actually, um, you know, it's, it's quite common for a letter to go to all MPs. And it's actually just a, it's just an email. So, so it's it went not to all MPs that would go to ministers anyway. Yeah. Yep. So well, if you just cool. write to members of parliament, we can yeah, take the right ministers out. Yep. So they're included. Right. So just members of parliament. Okay. Okay. Any other debate before I put these? Phil. Well, I guess we'll have some further discussion too at the committee. Just, but that's more, I guess, the fine tuning of it. But I, I just want to start by saying uh, what an excellent report. Diane has written for us. Um, it, it, it's very professional, the science is there, and it's absolutely clear. And I think one of the things that I've become clear on 
since it came to our committee previously, is how in fact the economic benefits around deep sea drilling are clearly overrated. And the information we had around the royalties, and in fact New Zealand will be about the fourth lowest royalty taken in the world, um, that sort of um, begs a lot of questions really. And, and also that the, any oil produced would be um, processed overseas. Other, the other factor too that in fact we've got no New Zealand has no experience of of deep uh, deep sea drilling for, for oil. We do in Taranaki, but it's a very the risks are connected with deep sea drilling are just so much greater. I think it's of serious concern that in fact we've we've got this proposition the government so far is supporting, but there's been no cost benefit analysis whatsoever done to date. The, the concern too about you know a potential oil sp spill, I've got no doubt, uh, especially having heard the submitters, is not uh, o o overrated, because in, in fact you know a, a, a deep sea dr drilling, an oil spill would spread much further, um, and even in terms of how you know there's some limits uh, uh, on the drilling of course, but we all know that um, for example the 12 the 12 nautical mile limit, we all know though that in fact. Um, if there is an oil sp spill, there's no limit to where that uh, a serious um, disaster of oil, sp uh, uh, of oil spreading could, could go to. And, and like we do know that, that ex the example in, in um, the Gulf of Mexico, the Horizon d disaster, the costs there were around $70 billion. This country cannot afford anything like that. So I, I think, you know, too, and, and um, I thank Ian for making the point that we need to clarify um, about uh, about the um, the liability, but we and so we do need clarity that in the event of, the, of a disaster too, just what proportion of any recovery costs our um, city council would would be obliged to pay. So you know I've got I've strongly support the submission. I think this is an important role for not only government but we're local government to to look after our our citizens and our children and our environment. So, because there is clearly a combined um, number of threats here, and it's a very important submission to support. Thank you. Glenn, I've got next, then Yanni. Thank you. I'd like to begin uh, by acknowledging, yes, I think it is a very good report, and pointing out that in parts 1.2 and 5.3 in the report, in relation to some criticism directed at the Council this week, that in fact the council was invited, and has been invited, it's there in black and white, to make a submission on this block offer. It is well within our bounds to do so. We have a responsibility. And in relation to that, I think we have a responsibility with, uh, or uh, to uh, Mahanui Kiritao to uphold that uh, kaitiakitanga, that stewardship of our environment. The four well-beings technically may be out of the LGA, but they pop up still in various other places and it behoves us to, hold, uh, to uphold those. It's good to see also in 3.49 the reference back to our climate strategy, which is now 20 years old um, in this council in relation to uh, ongoing use of fossil fuels. In that respect, I think it's a very good comprehensive report. I encourage you all to support these amendments put forward, which I think are very good from Councillor Johansson. Okay, thanks, Yanni. Yeah, um, just to be quick, I think it is an excellent submission and it raises very real and legitimate concerns and all that adds up to saying actually we should oppose this block offer. Uh, you know, to me this is actually not a question of if, it's a question of when something goes wrong. And this is a huge gamble to play in terms of our environment. It's a gamble that I'm not prepared to take and I think it's great that we've seen uh, this council being very progressive in its thinking around what the consequences will be when something goes wrong and if it happens to be within our area. I cannot understand what, and you know, I want to acknowledge both um, sides of the political spectrum, this government and previous governments who have actually put energy into coming up with marine reserves and actually supported the idea that we would protect some of these really fundamental things that make us unique as New Zealand and encourage tourism and encourage a healthy environment. So I cannot understand why we should put that at risk. And when you look at the proposed block offer for our region in particular, adjacent to a marine 
reserve. It just doesn't make any sense at all. So uh, the reality is that if something goes wrong, it will have devastating consequences on us as a city and us as a region. And we should vehemently oppose what's being sought. Um, the issue of local democracy is, I think, incredibly relevant in terms of people not even having a right to have a say. Uh, and so that's why we as a council, I think, need to take a strong role in challenging what, what this sort of behaviour could lead to. Uh, and you, the, the other point is you only need to look at what's happening with fuel prices um, to really wonder whether this is actually a very good investment at all. And I would suspect that in the short to medium term, actually there's no need for this sort of activity to be occurring. Uh, and we're much better trying to do things like build a cruise ship terminal to encourage people to come and enjoy our marine reserves or our natural environment or the things that make us unique as New Zealand or Christchurch rather than taking a high stakes gamble such as the deep sea oil exploration. Thank you. Shall I put them separately? Is everybody, everybody happy with all together? Yeah. Okay. I'll put those. Those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed? David? Right. Yep. Do you want it noted? Okay. 